All right, here's her maiden flight here in the U.S. Bob is getting her ready. Uh, we're very, very excited, uh, of course. It seems like everything here I'm excited about, but it's a beautiful plane. And it, being an, uh, a gyroplane, the, the rotor up here is non-powered. And as uh, you can see the propeller back here, as the airplane gets pushed forward, the gyroplane gets pushed forward by that prop, then it automatically rotates the the top rotor and it's an auto rotator auto gyro and that's why they i think they named the company auto gyro so he just called clear prop uh faa was here yesterday and she got her first checkup everything uh was great got that taken care of so bob is doing the first flight on uh, really the airworthiness test. Uh, this was shipped from Canada. Uh, they, they took the rotor off the top in order to fit it on the, uh, the truck, strapped it all down, brought it down from Canada here to Maryland. Then they reassembled the rotor, get everything tested, went through all the diagnostics, all the electronics, uh, all, everything here, made sure it was in good condition. I added an ADSB out which is the uh, aircraft uh, service that lets other aircrafts and, and towers know where I am. That wasn't installed in Canada, but it's required here in the U.S. Uh, Bob's just putting on the headset there. Got two new headsets. Fortunately, um, and unfortunately, this whole process was kind of delayed through just getting things done. And uh, but I was because of the delays, I was able to get some really good buys on equipment. Those Bose headsets, I did all the uh, testing uh, reviews on them. Everybody said they're expensive, but that they're worth it. So uh, I bought them, and they were on sale, so that was good. And then the GoPro camera that's inside the aircraft right now. Those were on sale at Costco, so I was able to save money on that. So I like getting good quality equipment, but I really like getting good quality equipment when it's on sale. So he's just doing the normal uh, pre-flight here, uh, warming up the engine, revving it, making sure that the what they call T's and P's, the temperatures and pressures are uh, all green, and uh, uh, yeah, everything looks safe here on the ground before he takes off. So he is going to go up into what's called the pattern. He's just going to fly around the airport in kind of a rectangle and do some touch and goes make, uh, and look at all the equipment, make sure they're reading correctly. Of course, having the gyroplane come from Canada, everything was in the metric system, so we had to you know, convert kil uh, kilometers to, to knots and liters to gallons and uh, so that's all set so we'll turn over the rest of this video uh, to the uh, gopro 9 black that's inside and i'll talk more about that equipment in, in other videos but uh, he's you should be able to see the cockpit view uh, all the instrumentation bob and outside of the uh, window windshield as he flies as you can see from the windsock there, we've got a little bit of breeze, probably I'm guessing seven to 10 miles an hour right now. And we are just uh, across the water here from Annapolis. So we're down by the DC, Washington DC area. And I'm gonna have to go through special training uh, because I am within the radius of the uh, White House and uh, all the government buildings downtown in Washington DC. I have to go through special training in order to be approved to fly in this uh, airspace here. So here comes Bob. He's uh, done all the pre-rotor. Uh, he's uh, rotation for the rotor and he's just, I don't know if he's going to take off on this first run here or not, but uh, sounds like he's getting up to speed. So this will be her first, obviously her maiden voyage here and he's off and she's up and she's flying great. There she goes. And that is uh, a gyroplane. 
Very short takeoff, very short landing. Uh, flies extremely well and stable in uh, thermals and uh, rough weather, rough winds. Uh, flies great in 30 mile an hour winds. Baybridge traffic, uh, Greg Gyro turning into a downwind for runway 11 Baybridge. The reason why I purchased this particular aircraft, uh, even though I've flown in hang gliders and uh, trikes uh, and uh, fixed wing, air wing, uh, fixed wing uh, aircraft and so forth, is because uh, this is so stable and we have lots of wind in Idaho. Of course, I will be setting limits on what weather conditions I'm willing to fly in, even if the aircraft is capable of doing it. But you can see uh, he went uh, uh, up to the downwind and took off and, and took a left uh, on the pattern, which is a normal uh, pattern here at the, at the airport. And he's just going to be doing a couple patterns. He's probably going to come down here next and just do a touch and go just to make sure everything is working properly. There was traffic, uh, gray gyro turning uh, base to final runway 11, stop and go Bay Bridge. This is really the, uh, the, the flight airworthiness test right here. You can see some uh, cumulus nimbus clouds billowing up there. He's trying to get the first flight in before we uh, get the afternoon rains here. It's uh, been in the 90%, uh, 90 degree temperatures and 90% humidity. So we're hoping for a cold front to move in uh, to cool things down. So he's just, he's on uh, uh, the, the bottom of the um, pattern here, and he's just going to make his final uh, turn here to come in on his descent. Looks like he may be, no, he's coming in, I can't tell which uh, airstrip he's going to be coming in. Looks like the same airstrip he took off on. So unfortunately, I don't have a handheld uh, radio with me, so I can't hear him doing any talking over the radio. But you'll be able to hear him talk on the radio through the uh, wiring setup, an audio setup I purchased uh, with, uh, in addition to the GoPro. So uh, as I'm um, narrating this, uh, I'll be flipping back and forth as, as I've already been doing uh, between the in-camera and uh, setup and here on the on the mobile phone. So he's just did a nice touch, uh, slowed to look almost a complete stop. Now he's doing another takeoff here. Very short takeoff. You see it's just, it's less than 300 feet on a no wind day. The more wind we have, the less runway we need. In a 30 mile an hour wind, it's literally uh, as little as 10, mile, uh, 10 traffic, uh... feet. Craig to take off into a downwind for runway uh, in a headwind one, one, Bay and in uh, almost zero feet on landing in a headwind okay so he's going around for his second pass here uh, this may not look very exciting to you but this proves that the aircraft has been uh, tested well gone through here with the the crew here on the ground and it's been in the in the shop for a few weeks making sure everything is working properly and we did uh, any upgrades we needed to make sure that it happened a great crew here at uh, auto gyro uh, they they don't have a shop but they are in the same building as a shop that specializes in gyros and dynons and uh, aviation equipment here so we're in really good hands I purposely came here all the way to Maryland. It's literally from coast to coast uh, because I wanted to get trained by Bob. Uh, he's uh, well known in the auto gyro, uh, in the gyroplane industry as a, a person who loves the auto gyro and someone who is a great CFI, so certified flight instructor. And Bay traffic, uh, Gray Gyro is final runway one one stop and go Bay Bridge. So I'll mention this a couple times in videos, but the reason why I'm doing this video log 
is to help others who are going through the same process, whether it is a um, gyroplane or fixed wing air airplane or maybe a helicopter, uh, you know, any rotorcraft. So you kind of understand what I've been going through and you, it may help you as you go through your process and getting your plane up and running. Uh, I kind of did it backwards, uh, but it kind of lets you know my level of commitment to anything I commit to. And I bought the aircraft first. Um, uh, it was a lot of money. Uh, this one uh, was used, bought it from Canada. Uh, normally an aircraft, uh, brand new coming from Germany, would be $200,000 plus, uh, depending on how you outfit this. This has been outfitted with uh, leathered uh, seats with lumbar support and heated seats. Uh, it has the glass uh, 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 display cockpit. Switch. Oh, that just uh, makes my heart pound a little bit faster as it goes by. A little excited thump there. Uh, it's just flying true. And uh, yeah, I'm, tomorrow we go up. I'll be in it tomorrow well I don't know if we actually go up but tomorrow is my first training class with Bob and I imagine we'll be spending a bunch of time running up and down the the runway here and uh, testing to make sure I I know how to run the controls and the pedals and and so forth so he has now left the pattern he's comfortable with the way that it's flying here and so he's going to go out further uh, and uh, test it out kind of stretch its legs start probably hitting some of those uh, top uh, limits to make sure that everything is working properly. So really he's my test pilot in addition to my certified flight instructor. So he's making a turn here. I'm going to uh, uh, probably just stop editing here. I stop uh, recording here and you're probably looking right now as I edit this at the video from inside the cockpit. So you're probably getting a lot better view than I am standing here, uh, down here in the middle of the, the uh, air, airstrip. So uh, what, what I've been doing, this is, uh, today is Friday. I got here uh, Wednesday. Yesterday was the first day I was here at the airport. I was here about uh, 8.30 yesterday morning. Um, I was here this morning at 8. And uh, I just plan on, uh, you know, dedicating my entire time here uh, while I'm here totally focusing on uh, my ground school, going through the training and uh, retaking the, the questions over and over again and then start taking the test, uh, the, the sample tests. Once I get uh, 80 or 90 percent consistently on those uh, sample tests, I'll be able to print out uh, a report showing my completion and success with the training that I've taken. Then I'll register to take a, a ground, the uh, written test and get that taken care of for my private pilot license. So it's a lot more than what's involved with the sport pilot license. And then I'll be able to uh, fly uh, at night. I'll be able to fly uh, IFR, which is instrument uh, flying instead of just visual flying VFR looking out the windows. Okay. Bob is out of sight right now, so I'm just going to cut off the video here, and uh, I'll pick it up on the inside cabin. Hey, Rich, you're in a comp system, 5264 Kilo, radio check, please. Yeah, clear. Yep. Hey, Rich, traffic, uh, gray gyro, 9 Victor is about 3 miles out to the east, and we're going to enter a uh, downwind, left downwind for runway 11, Bay Bridge. Hey, Rich, traffic, uh, Gray Gyro is turning into a uh, downwind, left hand downwind for runway 11. Bay Bridge. Hey, Rich, traffic, Cessna 5264 Kilo, clear 11, Bay Bridge. David, traffic like 402 echoing on five miles down the airport, outbound for runway 11, David. Bridge. Bay Bridge traffic, uh, gray gyro, turning base for runway 11, full stop, Bay Bridge. 
And Bainbridge traffic, uh, gyro short final, 1-1, one, one, full stop, Bainbridge. Bainbridge traffic, lights 402 echo on Flying over the airport at 2,300 feet. Bainbridge traffic. Favorite traffic, uh, gray gyro, turning clear, runway A11. Bridge traffic, Cessna 5264 k no take off 11, departing to the northeast. I've sped it up here a little bit, but uh, Bob is taxiing into the hangar, shuts everything down inside the gyroplane, gets out, grabs the rotor mitten puts it on the rotor ties it down so it uh, stays in place while it's in the hangar and then shuts her down for the evening more to come tomorrow as i take my very first training flight in the new gyroplane see you then